What's up, guys? What's up, Chaz? How you doing? How's your mouth? Hey, Timmy, the big lips. This tank may be one of the most controversial tanks that we have in all of the fish room. Today, we're going to talk about why. Hope you enjoy the video. So there may not be any more hotly debated topic on the internet when it comes to cichlids as to whether or not you can keep your African cichlids with your South and Central American cichlids. There are purists out there that say, no way, this should never be done. And then there are those who have done it, had success, and challenged that opinion. In this video, what I want to do is I want to really look at this pragmatically. I want to look at what we do when we're deciding whether or not we're going to keep certain fish together. No doubt, as some of you look at this tank, some of you love it, some of you hate the mix of fish that we have together. But I want to tell a little story, and I think it's really going to help us understand whether or not we can keep these different types of fish together. I want to tell the story of this 125. When I originally set this up, it was for three Oscars, a Jewel Cichlid, and a Geophagus Steindachmeri, and a couple Bristlenose Plecos. That was the only thing I ever intended to put in this tank. How did it wind up like this, such a crazy mess of fish? We're going to talk about that. So obviously we have Chaz here. He's our Oscar. There's only one of them. I lost the other two, one to disease and the other one accidentally, well not accidentally, it just jumped right out of the tank and found him on the floor a day later. Unfortunately, we lost both of those fish. So we, we have him. Now, even when we had the other Oscars, I slowly started adding different types of fish in this tank for some very good reasons. One, You'll see here that we've got some African cichlids. They're peacocks, so we've got some OBs in here. We've got some red empress in here. The first African cichlid that I recall adding to this tank was the red empress that we see right here, in fact. That red empress was in the 75 gallon right next door, and it was in there with other peacocks. Unfortunately, full-grown male red empress cichlids can be a little rough on one another, especially in a 75 gallon, so we had to move him out because if we didn't, he was going to be killed in that tank. The question I had, the problem I had to deal with is where was I going to move this fish? I needed to get him out right away. And as I looked around the fish room, I realized, one, while Oscars can be very large, they're not very aggressive. And this was a large Oscar. And that fish would probably go ahead and fit in well here as he was healing. And so sure enough, I put him in here and he was fine. He left the Oscar alone. The Oscar has always left him alone. And it's worked out wonderfully. How did I know that was going to work? Because of the overall temperament of the fish, I knew the individual fish pretty well. I knew the species fairly well. And they have been together now for quite some time without any problems. So what happened next? The next thing that happened is we had some of these OB. And actually what they are is they're a mix of red empress and dragon blood peacocks that are right next door in the 75. So we had these smaller fish. At the time, they were probably about an inch or so. And I had a lot of them, so I threw some of them in here just to see if they would grow out, what colors they would be. I didn't know if, if the Oscar was going to eat those fish. He wound up leaving them alone. I addressed that issue in our fish food, our fish feeding video. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. But our larger fish leave the smaller ones alone in this tank. They always have. So I wound up with some of these fish that turned out to be really pretty OBs. I've got some dragon blood mixes in here. And guess what? Those fish leave the South American and Central American fish alone. Now, will they chase each other sometimes? Of course they will, they're African cichlids. But one of the things I hope you see in this tank, there's no real serious fin nipping going on. No one's got shredded fins. No one's up in a corner fearing for their lives. And this, this tank has always been that way. They work things out. They have their own little parts of the tank. They have their own little rock structures. But when we're mixing these African and South American fish, it's worked out fairly well. Now, obviously, the elephant in the room, or the Timmy in the room over here, uh, this is a Nile tilapia, Oreochromus niloticus. This is a great fish. So the story with this one is I bought 10 of them. Yes, 10 of them for $1 at a Greater Chicago Cichlid Association monthly meeting. No one was buying them, no one was bidding on them, so I bid a dollar, and my plan was to take these fish, go ahead, turn them around at a swap for people who have larger tanks. I did that, except I kept one, this guy here, Timmy, uh, because I just really liked his personality. Now, he was growing very fast. These tilapia grow extremely fast. They were in a 10 gallon, and even in a 10 gallon tank, he was approaching two inches within about four weeks. I needed a place to put him. Where was that place? in here. I figured the only issue I was going to have initially was that Chaz here, he was a big guy, and Timmy at the time was a very small fish. Well, 
Chaz left him alone like he's always left the smaller fish alone because he's well fed. And now we see that Timmy is a much larger fish and yes, he is an African cichlid. So again, we've mixed these fish together, but I hope one of the things that you're realizing is I take a little bit of time to understand the personalities of the species of fish, but not only that, I understand the individual fish to see whether or not that this is gonna work. Now, I don't wanna give the impression that this always works because it doesn't. In fact, at one point, I had a Midas cichlid male that was getting beat up in another tank, and I temporarily moved him in here, but that move never really sat well with me. It, it never made me feel comfortable. I kept a very, very, very close eye on that mix. And for a long time, he was doing just fine until one day he decided that he was going to run the tank. And sometimes this is how it can happen. Fish can change almost instantly. Overnight, you might have fish that are getting a lot, especially if we're talking about cichlids, and then all of a sudden things happen. And so what happened was that Midas cichlid started pushing Chaz into the corner, wouldn't let him eat, and pretty soon wouldn't let him come out of the corner this is his tank so i wasn't about to let that happen so we removed that midas cichlid i put him in a 30 gallon tote so that he could just kind of have his own time out and then i got him out of the fish room and to somebody who had a larger tank with fish that were more appropriate for his personality and for his aggression so the point is it doesn't always work sometimes it will and that's what we're seeing here now one of the biggest arguments when it comes to mixing africans and South American fish, one of them is aggression levels, and that is absolutely something to consider. Understand that the fish I have in this tank are here because for the most part, there's a size difference that works, and there's a personality aggression difference or similarities that will also work in this tank. Things I would never do in this tank, I would never put Imbuna cichlids in here because even though they are smaller, they can get extremely aggressive. You will not see me putting other Midas cichlids in here long-term, uh, red terrors or uh, texas cichlids or jack dempsey's because those fish tend to be a little bit more aggressive the fish that i have in here tend not to be as aggressive so we really have to understand personality the second thing and i think this is one of the most important things when it comes to am i going to mix african and central south american cichlids together and that is actually diet so all the fish in here, if I throw a block of bloodworms in here, I'm really not worried about somebody being sick as a result. If I had Mbuna in here, that would be a big problem. I can't just throw chunks of bloodworms in here because if they eat them, they might wind up getting sick. They would prefer a higher vegetable diet. So when you're mixing fish together, and it's not just cichlids, it's any type of fish, understand the diet that is required by the fish because if you have non-meat eating fish that tend to bloat or have some kind of an issue, if they eat too much protein, you may have an issue later on. And so I definitely consider diet when I'm mixing my fish together. Now, one of the things that I think is very interesting is when people talk about water parameters as a reason why you don't mix fish together. And this particular argument never, ever, ever held a lot of weight for me. And there's one simple reason for that. And I think it really has to do with how we all, almost all of us keep fish. If you're just keeping your community fish, the fish that you would normally keep you find in a pet store. Think about it. Do you really take the time to change the water parameters for the fish in each tank before you buy them? And do you maintain those different water parameters in all of your tanks? I can tell you, at least from our perspective, with I think we've got 68 fish tanks now, all of our fish tanks have pretty much the exact same water parameters. So for instance, we look at our multi-tank. Guess what? That's a pH of between 8.2 and 8.4, hard water, temperatures between 78 and 80. You look at our Apisto tanks, same thing, pH around 8.2, temperatures in the upper 70s, hard water. Same thing with our South American cichlids, our African cichlids. We do not take the time to adjust water parameters for any of the fish that we keep. Now, if you are going to breed fish, that may be something totally different. If you've got wild fish coming from certain areas, that may be different as well. But for the most part, when you're dealing with tank raised fish that you would buy at a store, they're not wild type, you're not trying to breed them. As long as you're somewhere around that neutral pH level, water hardness is somewhere in the, you know, the mid hardness levels. I am really not all that worried about individual water parameters. I don't think that particular argument holds a lot of weight because not, probably 90% of people who keep fish don't adjust their water parameters for the fish that they're keeping. But here's the really important factor to understand. Please understand, if this was my only tank, 
I would not have this mix of fish. So after saying everything I've said, I personally would not mix these fish if this were my only tank. If I didn't have 68 fish tanks and ways to move fish around, this would never happen. In fact, the only reason why this happened is because I needed to move fish out of other tanks. I would be far, far, far more careful about the fish that I am mixing if I'm just bringing fish in from a pet store and building an aquarium or maybe two in a fish in a you know in a bedroom or a living room. The reason this is working is I don't have a lot of stress if something doesn't work. I can move these fish to another tank. I've got 30 gallon grow out totes everywhere. I can move them temporarily. I have a mechanism with the, the auctions and the swaps to move fish if they don't work in our fish room. So there's not a lot of stress there for me in terms of seeing if this is going to work and then having to move stuff. Again, the example I use with the Midas cichlid is a really good one. I put him in here. He was fine for months. Never truly felt comfortable with that. Had to get him out. Now, when we look at the 75 gallon right next door, we have the female Midas cichlid in there. And she has been with those peacocks now for quite some time, a number of months, and they're all working out wonderfully together because she's not particularly aggressive. She is a female. And that particular tank has their hierarchy already worked out. Everybody's leaving one another alone. Could that change? Absolutely. And if and when it does, I will have a mechanism, a means to move that fish out. So my advice to you is if you are going to do this, have a backup plan. You have to have a backup plan when you're dealing with cichlids. And it's not just when you're mixing different types of cichlids, Africans with South Americans or, or Central Americans, any cichlids. Because they can be more aggressive, they can be a little bit more territorial, especially if you're new to them and you're not quite sure how to manage the aggression, you need to have a backup plan. That backup plan may be, I've got to take this fish back to the store, or I've got a buddy who's got a tank that can house this fish. The best backup plan you can have is your research. Do the research before you buy the fish and that's going to go a long way in making sure the fish that you have that you want to keep together are going to be okay so you're not trying to pawn your fish off on a friend or bring it back to the store and pretty much like, yeah, we're not going to give you our money back, your money back, but we'll take the fish. So do your research, have a backup plan. This I would never do if I just had one tank. I would probably stay to either African cichlids or South and Central Americans but maybe not try to do this. I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. Have you kept, have you mixed Africans with South and Central Americans? Did you have success doing it? If you didn't have success, why? Again, I would love to see those comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. You guys, these all the, give me kisses. You good boy, you good boy. You did very, very good. You looked at the camera the whole time. You looked at the camera almost the whole time. What a good boy.